with us this morning. Praises your seated this morning. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Welcome to Life Changers. We're excited that you're here today. We're just glad that to have you in the house of the Lord with us. We're excited to be here, and we hope that you are too. I just pray that you came with a prepared heart to receive what God has for you this morning. If you're a first-time guest, we just want to welcome you in the house. Thank you for being a part of our service. If you're an online um, if you're an online guest or even an online full-timer, let's give them a, a, a clap this morning. Thank you for being in the house today. We're excited that you're here. We just know that um, you could have been anywhere else, and God brought you here today, and so we're excited that you're here. If you are a first-time guest and you did not receive a guest card, there should be one in the seat in front of you. Also, if you're online 
and you are a first time guest, please fill out that online guest card. We want to know that you're there with us. Um, for those of you that are in the building, if you did not receive a card, there is one in the seat in front of you. And at the end of service, you can take that to either corner of the sanctuary or the second foyer as you go out. We want to give you a gift and just thank you for being a part of our service today and just um, welcome you again. So thank you for coming. I did ask if you had prepared your heart to receive what God has for you today. And I've been thinking about that. I heard something um, this morning about that, and it just really intrigued me because I thought, how often do we come to church and have our hearts prepared? Now, as pastors, um, I know that any time that I'm going to preach the word, I have to prepare my heart several days before it's time. And, um, and the day before that I speak, or maybe if I'm speaking at night, the day of, I really try to stay into a heart of, of worship and, and just preparing my heart because I know that, that the calling that God has is heavy. And so when people come in, they come to receive something. And so I like to prepare my heart. I know Pastor Todd does as well for you guys, for what God has for you. And so, but on the other hand, do you come prepared to worship? Do you come prepared to praise him? Do you come prepared to receive from him what he has for you today? Because if you're in this building today, God has something for you. He has a word for you. He, has, um, he may have a healing for you. He may have peace in your mind here that's for you. And so did you come preparing your hearts this morning? If you did not, it's okay. Because I just ask that for the next little bit, you'll take some time before we go into worship and you'll just ask God, God, help me prepare my heart. What do you want for me today? Help me to not be distracted by all the things going on around me. Because how many of you know the enemy will use everything to distract us when the God's trying to speak to our heart? And so don't allow things to distract you to keep you from focusing on what God has for you here. Because I know God has a word for you. He has something special for you today. And so we're going to go to the Lord with our tithes and offerings. And as you, as you come preparing your hearts um, with prepared hearts to receive what God has, I also know that some of you came prepared to give this morning. And so there's different ways that you can give. We have boxes all over the building now that's marked tithes and offerings. You, there's envelopes there. You can just put your money in there. That would be fine. Otherwise, there's going to be ushers coming back. Um, if you want to give into the offering this morning, if you want to give online, there's many different ways that you can do that as well. So thank you for giving this morning. Um, you know, God is good to each and every one of us. We may can sit back and say, I don't have everything I want. But you know what? When we put God first, we have everything that we need. He always makes a way. He always provides. And he's proven himself to be true over and over. So if you'll stand on your feet this morning, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. We, we are blessed this morning with um, some of our talented teenagers that's going to be putting on a drama for you today. And um, it's an amazing song, and it's going to be uh, really amazing. So I want you to think about this. These teenagers did this themselves. This wasn't, um, this wasn't put together by our choreographers. They, they choreographed it themselves. And so as they do that a little bit later, um, just think about how God's using them in, at this time. And they could be doing a lot of different other things besides being in the house of the Lord this morning. And so we're thankful for them today. Let's just go to prayer. God, we thank you again for your blessings. We give you praise, Lord, for each and every person that's in this building, God. We know that you are here and that, God, you have something for each and every one of us, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive that, Lord, and as we pre prepare our hearts and our minds to worship you, Heavenly Father, we just want you to receive that, God, to receive our worship, to receive our praise, God, and, and allow us to um, not miss this moment, God, for something that you may have for us, and maybe, God, it's for somebody else, and we need to celebrate that. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We ask you, God, to take this offering and bless it for your kingdom and for your glory, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise in Jesus' name.
some praise in the house. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated if you'd like. nothing to do
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a song. What a, what a song today. Man, some, between the, that song and the one before it, there should be some kind of gratitude rolling around in here. We should be appreciative of what God is doing. Let me share Isaiah 1 and 13 just to tag that song for you. Uh, it says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Man, how beautiful is that, that he's washed us clean. There's not a person in here that didn't need to be clean. There's not a person in here that probably doesn't still need to be clean. But I love that he is picking up the pieces. He's cleaning us piece by piece. And that excites me this morning. And you guys ought to be applauding again right now. Right? Amen. He is worthy today. What an awesome God we serve. Man, I figure one of y'all would kick your shoes off and just take off wide open right after that one. Okay, does anybody, did anybody kick their shoes off? You were just a little bit inhibited. You're still free to go, free to run. Uh, I think that those, those dramas, those skits that they do, man, they just sort of set us up for a moment, set us up for some, uh, I think, some thinking at least, get our mind going and saying, God, thank you for cleaning me. Thank you that though I'm not perfect, God, that you're willing to day by day and piece by piece clean me up. And so I give God glory that he is not looking for perfection, amen. We don't serve a God looking for perfection. We serve a God that wants us to submit to him and, and hope for, right, move toward progression. I hope I'm not the same guy I was 34 years ago. I, well, I know I'm not the same guy I was 34 years ago. And to be honest, I'm not the same guy I was 10 minutes ago. Those two songs right there, man, when we sing about how holy God is, uh, when we talk about how he has cleaned us up, we didn't deserve any of it, but I will take it. Amen. Humbly, I will receive what Christ did for me at Calvary, what he did for me at the empty tomb, and I hope that's your, that's your mindset this morning. I saw that water flowing on the screen there, and I leaned over to Dean, and I said, at least five of these people today are going to go trout fishing just because of that stream that was rolling through there. And uh, if you do, hey, I hope you catch a, a lot of fish. I hope your nets are overflowing, but don't, don't catch us in ticks. We don't want anybody going to jail or getting a ticket, but we just give God glory this morning. Would you give him another hand clap of praise today? I'm going to be talking a little bit today, or well, specifically today about making up our mind, that we've made up our mind one way or the other, right? We've I mentioned last week we set a vision out in front of ourselves and we say, I want to make it to here one day. And if you set yourself to be a millionaire, let's use that. If we set ourselves that one day I want to be a millionaire, then probably we're not spending on every little thing that pops up on Marketplace or on Craigslist. If we've set ourselves to be a millionaire, we've sort of uh, conditioned ourselves, to, uh, disciplined ourselves in our spending. And so I'm, I'm thinking that we can probably grab that, right? I want to have this much money in the bank when I'm 30, this much when I'm 40, this much when I'm 60. And whether it ever happens or not, that's the direction we're going. And when you let the vision drive, I promise you it'll get you there. It, it may not get you there by your appointed moment, but it'll get you there. It may get you there sooner. It could get you there later. But whatever that looks like, we can relate to money. But when I set my goal that I want to go to heaven someday, that should be the same thing that drives me that I want to get to heaven one day. I, I want to be mindful daily that my goal is heaven, mindful daily that I want to glorify God with my life, mindful daily that I, in my walk with God and in my daily walk with God, I make decisions that take me that direction, that lead me in that direction. Will there be moments I fail? Absolutely. Will there be moments I mess up? You better believe it. Will there be moments when I, I'm not real certain of what's happening, but I still know what my vision is? Absolutely. And so when we set ourselves up for that, I believe there comes a time when we just have to make up our minds. Make up our minds. There's not a millionaire today uh, that, that didn't set a goal. There's not a person today that has their home paid for at an early age that didn't set a goal. There's not a person today. I, I, was, uh, I was talking to some folks, and this person told me, and said, I'm getting ready to buy a vehicle and all these things, and I'm thinking in my head, you know, I'm going to be watching and see where the best finance rates are, try to help him out, and not to, not to think he didn't have the money, right? But then when I said, hey, this is that and that is this, they said, oh, no, I'm paying for it. And I said, well, you go, big daddy, right? He set a goal. This person set a goal that I'm going to buy me a vehicle and I'm going to pay for it when I get it. Until then, I'm going to drive what I got. And so when we set our minds to something, when we make up our minds to do something, I feel like that it's, it's just as important 
right, to make up our minds to have an everyday walk with Jesus Christ. That I made up my mind this morning, I'll make up my mind again tomorrow morning, and I'll make up my mind again Tuesday morning. You know, I, I believe that every day we have to set our sight. I think every day we have to realign. I think every day, because all hell may have broke loose yesterday, but today my goal is still the same. It may have gone crazy yesterday. The kids may not be where I want them to be. The grandkids may be off the rail. Our finances are upside down. But my goal, what's your goal this morning? What have you set your mind to this morning? Because here's the thing. We hear from pastor friends of ours quite regular about this uh, uh, great falling away. What great falling away? The one that happens every summer. They call it the great summer falling away. They know that uh, heading into summer that these particular churches, these particular pastors know that they know that during the summer their numbers are going to plummet, but they don't lose hope and they don't lose sight. Why? Because they were there last year. And here's the thing about it. When we set our minds, that doesn't have to be the case. Why do we do a 930 service? So you have time to get to the lake, right? If you want to get to the lake, come to the 930 service. If you want to get, go fishing, come to the 930 service. If you want to fish all night at the lake, then come to the 11 o'clock service. You may just smell like bait or you may smell like fish, whichever. Right? Tom Kilgore asked me one day, he said, uh, you want to go fishing with us sometime? I said, well, I'll just be honest. I'm not really big on fishing. But if you ever make a trip that's, and ask me if I want to go catching, I'm all in. It's the wait. And so he's never invited me catching, but he has invited me fishing. And, and so here we are. And so when I think about that, with the opportunities that arrive with this warm weather, we catch ourselves. And this isn't a scolding. Um, this is just a reality of the, of the life, the society we live in right now. It seems like summer sort of steals some things from the house of God. Uh, summer sort of steals some commitment from the house of God. We'll talk about that just a little bit. Uh, our pastor friends call it the summer slump or the great summer falling away. And so we just want to mention that to you today, that even when we set our focus to serve God, we serve Him, and in the house of God, we serve Him uh, through the summer. Okay, thank you, 80 y'all. I'll see y'all all summer. Uh, <laughs> rest of y'all, see you the next tour. And so here we are. Let's look at some scripture in Ephesians chapter 4. I love the, I'm more than anything today, if you don't get anything out of my antics uh, if you don't get anything out of, out of the skit, if you don't get anything out of the praise and worship, we have to get something out of the Word of God. And so Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11, it said, He himself, this is Jesus Christ himself, gave us apostles, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You see, I believe that those per people, not to be set up on a shelf or not to be set up uh, as somebody or a person that you worship, but to be set up for someone that you honor. Someone that has authority in the house of God. Someone that has authority who studies the word, who gets behind this sacred desk up here, behind this sacred pulpit, and shares the word, whether it be in a classroom setting, whether it be in a Facebook setting, whatever it is, if they're standing behind the word of God, sharing with someone, then we are armed with the knowledge today, listen, that Jesus himself gave us those apostles. Jesus himself gave us prophets. He gave us evangelists. He gave us pastors. And he gave us teachers. And what's the point of that? It's not a problem in this house, but I've seen it over the years, in the last 30 whatever years of ministry, I've seen that it becomes something different than that. Uh, verse number 12 will sum it up for us, but when I look at verse number 12, that's not what I've seen uh, in society. I've not seen this necessarily. We find that we want our pastors to uh, flip on the lights, uh, open the church doors, empty the trash, clean the toilets, and we make a list of, of things, especially in smaller churches, and just to be frank with you, that shouldn't even be the case in a smaller church. We have enough people that could do that because here's why God gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Here's the thing. No bathroom cleaning, no opening up service, no locking down the doors, no mowing the yard, no all those things that I've seen over the years. And that's not the case here again. I will share that with you. They do not want me opening the doors. They do not want Pastor Tammy cleaning toilets. They do not do that. We have people that that is their ministry. They love doing that. They're here an hour and a half before you guys ever get here. They're here on Fridays or Saturday, sprucing up for Sunday morning. They're here on Tuesday, sprucing up for Wednesday night. And it's their ministry. And so we, if we take on those roles as pastor, then we are robbing someone of their opportunity to walk in a ministry that God has told them to walk in. I was speaking to, to Loretta. She is our uh, uh, house ministry here that takes care of everything. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we are grateful to her. 
And so we were talking one day. She's in here by herself. She's got the music playing. Of course, we leave it on all the time. I think she turns it up a little bit when she's here. And I said, listen, thank you for what you do. Man, the place looks great. We have compliments almost weekly of how good the, the property looks, or how good the building looks, and all the things. And she said, oh, you don't have to thank me. This is my ministry. And I was like, oh, yeah. Now, how many of you, went last time you was cleaning the toilet, said, God, I thank you. Maybe we'll process that one. But we are grateful for the folks that take care of the property here. Dylan Jones does a great job outside mowing all summer, and uh, they just knock it out of the park. And honestly, all those things, though, though, though they may get a, a token of appreciation, uh, it is a ministry. It is a calling that when they come on this property, they begin to work. So what's the pastor for, the apostle for, the evangelist and the prophet and the teacher? Well, verse number 12 sums it up. It's for the equipping of the saints. How awesome is that? How awesome that if I had to mow on Thursday and Friday and I had to clean the building on Tuesday and Monday, then how in the world would we have time to study so that we could equip you, right, for the work of the Lord? Let's move on. And so the, for the equipping of the saints and the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, I'm here to what? Lift you up. I'm here to edify the body of Christ and you being the body of Christ. That's exactly what we hope we get done today till we all come in unity. How long are we going to be doing this till we all come in unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God? When's that going to happen? Oh, we'll know. We'll know when that happens because he'll step out on the clouds of glory. We'll know when that time comes. But until he comes, we're going to be in the process of equipping the saints for the glory of God, equipping saints for the work of the ministry, edifying the body of Christ until or till uh, we all come in unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. That should settle it. Won't be next week, won't be next month. It'll be when God says, go get my children. It'll be when God says, go bring them home. When God says. And so when that happens, because the reason I have that revelation is because it says until we are the perfect man, and that will not be here. Now, my bride, don't tell her any difference. She thinks I am the perfect man. <laughs> and listen, she ain't wrong. I'm kidding. And so... We, we don't want to remind her of anything different than that. But as far as the church goes, and to a measure, to the measure of the stature <clears throat> of the faithful of Christ. And what does that mean? I mean, the fullness of Christ. What does that mean? I don't know. You tell me. I think when we have the fullness of Christ, it'll be there, not here. We can have all we can handle here, but when we get there, we'll have more than we can handle. When we get there, we'll have more than we can handle. I got to move. Verse number 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. That's the scary thing. You can see it on TV now. You can even catch it. You don't even have to catch a, an evangelist or a pastor or anything uh, that uh, preaching maybe some tricky grace. Uh, you can just watch the media now. You can watch the media now. They're exposing them. Uh, uh, Let me just move. Let me go with that. And, and so not being tossed by every wind of doctrine, by, every, by the trickery of men in the, the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. And so that's the enemy's job. He wants, to do, he wants to distract you, and I promise you, if you get distracted, you'll get defeated. Guarantee it. If you were getting ready for a service in the military, they would, they would want you to be focused. If you were getting ready and you're putting on your belt and all your things to go out and work in law enforcement today, tomorrow, next month, you need to be focused. You don't need to be worrying about a bunch of stuff because if you get distracted, you'll get defeated. And if you hit the battlefield with the, with the U.S. military, if you get distracted, you'll get defeated. When you hit the battlefield for the glory of God, if you get distracted, you'll get defeated. When you exit this building, you either become the conduit of the love and the truth of, of, and the grace of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, or you become a pawn for the enemy to use to destroy people. You make up your mind, but I promise you, if you get distracted from the mission and the call of God on your life, you may never stand behind a pulpit. You may never hold a microphone. You may never teach to a million people. But I promise you, God will use you outside this building. And when he begins to use you, you don't want to be distracted because it's a battlefield. It's for his glory. It's for the edifying of the house of God. And you may not even be a pastor. You may not be an ap apostle. You may not be a teacher. You may not be a prophet. But God will use you if you'll allow him. And so we make up our mind that I may not be a pastor, I may not be an apostle, but you have called me to be a man or woman of God, to be the conduit for Jesus Christ, that the gospel goes forth when nobody makes it into the house of the 
Lord. And so we find ourselves there. But look at verse number 15. We talk about all these things that we've been tossed to and fro, carried by every wind of doctrine. Don't be, don't be captured by the trickery of men or taken hostage by the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. I think there's pastors, and respectfully, I think there's been pastors through the years, respectfully, that, man, they just, they just barked the truth. They barked the truth, whatever the outcome was. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus ate with sinners. Jesus met with sinners. We don't expect you to cut all your friends off. We just expect to cut all, you to cut all the sin off, right? Before y'all processing that. And so we find ourselves speaking the truth in love that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. That's our vision. That's our mission. It should be our goal to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Well, Pastor, I just got saved last week. Yep, set your goal out there, whatever that looks like. Next month, next year, 10 years from now, 34 years from now, as, as it is with me, 35. Then we find ourselves set out there and we make up our mind that that is my goal, that I become like the head. I become like Christ. That I become full of his goodness, his mercy, his glory. And I become the conduit of Jesus Christ for the community, the lost around me, whether it's at Walmart or in the workplace. Verse number 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. It takes everybody. It takes everybody. We meet with pastors on a monthly basis. We meet with pastors, well, more than that, a couple, a couple times a month. We meet with pastors from everywhere, from South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, Florida, whatever, whatever there they are on our Zooms. And then we meet with local pastors here at the church once a month. And, and here's what we found out, that it takes every one of us. I, I, there can't be another me in that community over there. Why would I even think that's my, my responsibility? There can't be another me over there. Why, why would I think? You see, we got over 28,000 people in Wythe County. And so if I'm in competition, then nobody's going to get to the house of God. But if we all come together and fill every church in, in, in this community or every church in this county, then guess what? We still don't have enough room. I'm in competition with nobody. And so when we realize that and we have an understanding that it takes what I do and it takes what she does and it takes what they do and it takes what they do and it takes what you do, the way God uses you for his glory, the way God uses you to build the kingdom, the way God uses you according to the effective working by which every part, who's a part? If you're a child of God, you're a part. If you've asked Jesus into your heart yesterday, this morning, last week, last month, 10 years ago, if you ask Jesus into your heart, then you are a part of this, of this ministry, a part of this fellowship, a part of the work of God that takes it outside these four walls, you become a part that every part does its share. Wow. When we counsel people for marriage, we ask them, are you ready to give 100%? Are you ready to go? Are you ready? To, yep, yep, we're ready to give 50-50. Then don't get married. You can't survive on 50-50. Because if there's a day he's had a rough day at work, a hard week at work, and he feels like giving 30, that you may have to give 70 to make up that 100. She's had a rough week hanging out with the kids, doing work, doing all the stuff, eight hours at, at the job and eight hours at home and getting the meals ready, and she's wore out and she wants to give 10, then hey, you gotta, you got to make up a difference at 90. Until you're ready to give 100%. And I think it comes that way from the house of the Lord. Right? My part may only be 10%, but I'm willing to give 100. My, my part may, may, uh, may be the 10%, but if, but if Loretta couldn't get here, if some of the folks that back her up couldn't get here and they needed me to clean the toilets, guess what? It's not new to me. I've cleaned them before. Why would I do that? Because they, they may have a moment when, but somebody needs to still be in 100. When I have a moment, some of y'all still need to be at 100, right? When, when I have a 10, she's a 90. When, I have a, uh, when she has a 10, I'm a 90. And, and so when we take that out of our marriage, how awesome is that, that we can carry that from our marriage, rather, and carry it into the house of God with the understanding that, you know what, everybody in this building should be willing to give 100. If there's nobody opening that door, open that door. You see there's no one out there greeting for whatever reason. Hey, what happened to, what happened to Wayne? What happened to Richard? What happened to, what, uh, what happened, what happened, what happened? Then you find out they're sick. Guess what? Go out there and motion some people and wave at them. Show them that Colgate smile. It, is it your call? I don't know. You may like it. Right? I used to think mounds was the only way to go. But then I realized sometimes you feel like a nut. 
Some of y'all not old enough for that. You had to look it up. And so uh, sometimes I need an almond joy. So here we go. That it causes growth in the body for the edifying itself in love. How awesome is that? How do we edify each other? Love. How do we show love? I don't, how do you show love? Maybe it's taking your dishes off the table, putting them in the sink at the house. Maybe it's opening the door for somebody here. Maybe it's guiding somebody, seeing a mama struggling because daddy had to work today and her grabbing a diaper bag and a kid in one arm, diaper bag in the other, and trying to get her stuff, and you just go over and say, hey, let me carry that. Man, I'm just opening up all kind of ministry opportunities today. This is awesome. There's not a person in here that can't do anything that I just talked about. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 23, it says, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. You see, we need to make up our mind that whatever that looks like, no matter what, who and what comes against me, no matter what's going on in my life, I have made up my mind that I will hold fast to the confession of my hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another. You see, that's, we don't come, I don't come here just for me. You don't come here just for you, more than likely, Right? It's the person you smiled at, the one you shook hands with, the one that looked a little distraught, and you said, hey, how's it going? It's those moments that we take advantage of in the house of God. That's why it's so important that we're here. That's why it's so important that we make it here. That's why it's so important that you don't run down the other aisle if you see one of the church people coming down. It's kind of funny. We were in the grocery store one night, and I'm picking on somebody, but we was in the grocery store one night, and this person that went to our church, I see him coming, and I see him, I, you could hear the tire squall on the Walmart buggy. I was like, dude, that's weird. And I, and listen, you're better off just waving at me because I'm going to go find you. If you squall the tires, you'll see me again. Squall the tires, hit the turn. I was like, what in the world? So when we finally passed them again, hey, like this. All I know is it made them buy a set of bathroom rugs to cover up what they was buying that they didn't want us to see. <laughs> I might have just squealed and went the other way and put it back, but they bought some rugs they didn't need. <laughs> anyway, Whew. and it wasn't rugs we got on the next Pastor Appreciation Sunday. They just bought some rugs. It's a <laughs> fine deal. I still find that hilarious. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 again. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, without wavering, without wavering. And wavering comes with doubting. Don't doubt it. He's still God in the good times. He's God in the bad times. He's still God when your pockets are full or your pockets are empty. He's still God if you're sick or you're healthy. He's still God if the people are off the rail or they're not off the rail. He's still God. Doubting will bring wavering. I don't, I, don't, I don't argue the Bible. That's one thing I won't do with anybody. I don't argue the Bible and I don't argue politics. But I'll sit down with you with the Bible. We'll talk about the Bible. I won't argue that because once I begin to argue about it, then I feel like I'm trying to make a way or make excuses or vice versa. Then I find myself wavering because if I open that door, then it brings doubting. Quit opening your door. Don't let people plant foolishness in your head. If you don't know what it means, contact Pastor Tammy. She's the smartest guy in the room. I was going to say me, but I knew that was a stretch. Dr. Susan, we, if nothing else, we'll put you with Dr. Susan. She's a Bible scholar. She can help you, but don't fall for the foolishness and the rhetoric that the enemy wants you to begin to doubt yourself. For he who is, has promised is faithful, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking. Do not abandon the assembling of ourselves together in, as the manner of some is, but exhorting, strongly encouraging one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Day is capital D. As we see the time coming, as we see Jesus, I, I, have, to, I have to believe that it could be today. I'm not, it's not a prediction. I'm just telling you. Every day, I believe that we're close enough right now that it could be any day or every, whatever day that is that he could come back again. And in this scripture, how, how important is it in this scripture? Hold fast to your faith. Do not waver. God is faithful. Consider one another for the stirring up of love and good works and do not quit going to church. That's why. That's why. Why? Why would we not? Because we are, are assembling ourselves together in, in a manner of, as a, to exhort each other. Exhorting means to strongly encourage one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. We see the day approaching. 
I had people call us, or we had people call us, message us uh, just before the eclipse. Is Jesus coming back tomorrow? Is, is this the end of the world? Is this going to be the end of it all? Uh, is there any way we can meet? Is there some way we could pray? I mean, if this is the end, I want to be ready. And we begin to pre prepare ourselves for an eclipse more than we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And so now's the moment to say, guess what? He didn't come on the day of the eclipse. The world didn't end on the day of the eclipse. But it could be any day, at any moment. No man knows the day or the hour. How about since nobody knows, I make up my mind to set my vision to make it to heaven. To be on that train when he calls us home. To be in that number. Because he said the dead in Christ will rise first and then those that remain will be caught up into heaven to be with him in glory. I want to be there. Maybe one of us, some of us, any of us could be driving by a cemetery in that moment in the twinkling of an eye. I don't know if time will stop, but we could see the cemetery burst loose, dust going everywhere, the, the dead in Christ rising first. Know that you're next if you're a child of God. How beautiful is that? How awesome is that? I want to go to heaven. Now listen, I don't want to catch a bus today, but I want to go to heaven. When it's my time and when he comes, I want to be ready. And so I've made up my mind. Last scripture, Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or the freedom by which Christ has made us free. How about that? How about we begin to stand fast? How about we begin to make up our mind that we're going to stand fast, therefore, in the freedom of, of which, by which Christ has made us free, made you free, and do not entangle. Do not become twisted together again. That's what entangled is. You get all twisted together, right? I'm twisted together right back in the thing he saved me from, brought me out of, pulled me out of. He pulled me out of the flames and jumped right back in the fire. And I'm going to read this again. And it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom by which Christ has made us or made you free. And do not entangle, do not be entangled to become twisted together with, again, with a yoke. In other words, a yoke. We all probably possibly know what a yoke is. I'll explain it. Fastened around your neck, being led and guided with it. A yoke, if you look at a yoke, they make a single yoke, but they make a double yoke. And what I've found is the reason they made the double yoke is because we get two for the price of one. Two are working together to plow the fields, to bring in the harvest, to do all the things, and how awesome is that? But when one goes awry, guess what it does? It pulls the other one off track. Can I, with that scripture real quick, just encourage you to be careful who your friends are. Be, be careful where you spend your time. Be careful what you put your mind to. Be careful who you partner with. Because if it's a double yoke you're carrying, misery loves company. They'll gladly raise up the other side of that yoke and welcome you in. And they'll get you distracted. And then we'll find that you've been defeated. You see, God has great plans for your life, for my life, for our life together as a ministry. And he says right here, do not be twisted together again with it again. Do not be twisted together again with a yoke fastened around your neck, being led by and guided by bondage. And so when I think about that, I make it, my relationship with Christ is a conscious decision. Didn't just happen. I didn't become saved because I was just born to this planet. There is a responsibility we have. A responsibility we have. With Christ made a conscious decision to step out of glory. And in any of that 33 years that he lived on planet Earth, in any of that 33 years, he could have backed out, changed his mind. And at the last moment, he could have backed out and changed his mind. I have no doubt that when they nailed Jesus to the cross and they erected that cross and that thing fell down into that hole, I don't think it just jolted him. I think it jolted the universe. I think it jolted the heavens. All of heaven, I believe, stood at attention. I believe all of heaven, all the angels of heaven stood at attention ready to come and save him if he called for them. But it says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Though he could see my foolishness, though he could see my, my deeds, though he could see my action, though he could hear my words, he died for me anyway. And maybe you're pretty close to perfect. I know some folks that all they need is to ask Jesus in their heart. 
They live a great moral life. They're good to people. They're kind. They're patient. They're compassionate. They're all the things, but they've never asked Jesus in their heart. They've never had a relationship with Christ. And I believe that there's going to be some good old guys and some good old gals that don't make it because they never had a relationship with Christ. We can't good our way into heaven. You, won't, you can't good your way into heaven. The good comes. The good counts. Once you give your heart to the Lord, the good is your fruit. The good is the things that because of your relationship, I love people I never could love. I love, I love, I love color I never could love. I, I, I love people that are in addiction and people that are in a mess and people that are living in sin that I couldn't love before. But because of the great love that Christ had for me, that he laid down his life for me, that I can have that. And so this morning, I don't know where your mind is. I have no idea, right? I, I, I know that we can have a great conversation and I can leave that conversation thinking, man, they are all right. They are ready to go to heaven should something happen, but only you and him know that real, for real, right? Me and my wife probably know each other better than, right? I know her better than anybody else. She's going to heaven, right? And it wasn't because she yoked with me. It's because she chose to be yoked with him. You see, it's who you yoke with. You can yoke with the deceiver. You can yoke with the enemy. You can yoke with the, the liar. You can yoke. But when you yoke with him, it's all good works. And we begin to do good works. Why would I do good works? So that my light shines. That when they see that good work, they don't glorify me, but they glorify my Father in heaven. Conscious decision. Stand on your feet this morning. Let's pray. God, we love you today and we give you glory in this house. We just praise you today. Lord, I just believe today that if we haven't already, that we have, a, we have some folks in the house that are ready to make up their mind. We have some folks in the house that possibly need to make up their mind and they're not there yet or they haven't made up their mind yet. And God, I just know that you love them today. I know, Lord, that this word is straight. I know, Lord, that this word was what was true. I know, Lord, that this word is life-changing if we'll allow it to be. And so, God, I just ask you to love on this congregation this morning. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that while you did it for me in life, while you did it for me in death, while you did it for me in resurrection, and now you're still doing it for us uh, while you're sitting at the right hand of the Father, exceeding, interceding for us, God, I, I thank you. But God, maybe not everyone has that revelation. Give them that revelation this morning. Give them that nudge this morning. God, we praise you today and we give you glory in this house. With your heads bowed and your eyes still closed, man, if you, this morning when you grabbed that song and we were talking about his holiness and, and we were just singing about his goodness and we were singing about all the great things he's done and us worshiping him this hour, maybe something jumped in your spirit. Possibly when this uh, drama was finished and you realize the name of that song is clean and you're like man he wants to wash me clean or he has washed me clean and I've dirtied up my hands here and there and God I'm ready today to make up my mind and if that's you today maybe making up your mind the first time or maybe making up your mind again I'm not sure what that looks like for you but maybe today you would have an understanding that Jesus is waiting with open arms and if you would be bold enough to just, nobody's looking, if you'd just be bold enough to slip up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I'm ready to make up my mind. I'm ready to make up my mind. I'm ready to make up my mind. Would you pray with me this morning if that's you? And just say, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. Thank you for loving me in spite of me. Thank you for loving me when I was unlovable. Reaching me when I was unreachable. God, thank you for grace. I accept you as my risen Savior. And from this day forward, I choose to never be the same. I've made up my mind. I declare today I've made up my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody say amen this morning that we made up our mind? Give God a hand clap for those that prayed that prayer today, that gave their heart to the Lord, maybe rededicated their heart to the Lord. I, I know for a fact that Every word that we give, every word I give, is for me. Everyone. I've never shared a message. Uh, Pastor Tammy's never shared a message that she, it wasn't for her. Dr. Susan's never taught a lesson that it wasn't for her. You've probably been in the same position. This word is for all of us. This word.
doesn't just hit the top, top rail. It doesn't hit the low rail. This word is for us. And it don't matter if you have two pennies or two million dollars. God loves you today and he has a great plan for you today. Would you give us about five more minutes? We have a couple of folks wanting to join the church today. Listen, they've met you guys and still want to join the church. <laughs> That's worth applause, amen. God bless you guys. We can have the Bassetti family to come up here for just a moment. Every now and then we'll have, and you all can be seated, that would be fine. Every now and then we'll have people say that they would like to, like to join the, the church, you know, become a member, um, but they don't want to come up front, and we get that. We actually have an online way that you can um, become members as well. These beautiful girls as well are going to come up here. Didn't those girls do a great job? And Ethan? So this family has been with us for quite some time now, probably six or eight, nine, ten, going on a year, I'm sure. And um, they are just a blessing to us, and they, they are just willing to help out anywhere they can. And uh, these girls are very involved in youth, and um, we're very proud of what God's doing in their lives. Um, we're excited today that they, they want to become a member. What does that mean to us? That really just means that um, when we take votes on different things, they, they, have, that, um, they have that voice. Um, they, because we kind of love our people anyway. We don't really care if they're members or not, right? I mean, but we're glad when they want to be. So, um, but anyway, we just are, are proud of them. And so just going to ask you a few questions. He can ask you those questions. So giving your heart to the Lord. You feel called to this ministry. You feel called to this place. That's simple enough for me. Are you willing to give your talent? We already know. <laughs> are you willing to give your time? We already know that. And are you willing to give your tithes as the Lord blesses you? Amen. Now for the congregation. Are you guys willing to pray for them in the hard times? Rejoice for them in the great times? Encourage them in the low times? Right? Love on them all the time. Would you stand on your feet? We're going to pray for them. When I get finished praying, you can give them an applause. And then they're going to go through that door right there and sign some paperwork. But if it's all right, we're just going to pray for them today. God, we love you today. We just give you glory for this family. God, we're so grateful that though they know us, they want to join us anyway. Though they have experienced everything that's been going on these last several months, almost a year, God, they want to be a part of this. Lord, they see what you're doing here. Now bless them, Lord. Use them. They are a part of not only the family, but they are a part of the ministry. God, they are, we are jointly fit together, and we need their ministry. We need the call that's on their lives to go outside these four walls and show Jesus to the world. And so, God, we praise you today for this membership Sunday. We praise you today for this family that has joined this bigger family, and we ask you to bless them, bless our church in a mighty way. Continue to use us to glorify your name and to win souls for the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, can you give them a hand clap? Give God a hand clap this morning. We just give him glory. How awesome is that? He's a great God, amen. I know where you're going to be Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, but I'll remind you anyway. We'll be right here at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. We look forward to seeing you guys. And I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Make up your mind from this day forward. I'm going to follow you, chase after you, and do whatever I got to do. Amen. We love you guys.